So hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Kamjot Singh from Triplady Allahabad. Today I will be talking about reinforcement learning. So this shall be the outline of my presentation. We'll first focus upon the basics of machine learning. Then the three standard types of machine learning, which are supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning, where majorly we'll be focusing upon reinforcement learning, which is the topic of today's talk. Then we'll move ahead to the applications of reinforcement learning. A way to model reinforcement learning problem via Markov decision process. And two algorithms to solve Markov decision process, which are value iteration and policy iteration algorithms. Finally, we conclude this session. What is machine learning? Machine learning is a kind or a type of artificial intelligence where machines try to mimic what human beings are able to do. We are able to distinguish between different things, like we are able to distinguish whether a given fruit is a cherry or an apple or an orange very easily. Is the machine able to do the same things? Like, given an apple, if you show lots of images of apples to a machine, it is quite possible that with time, it will try to distinguish between an apple and an orange. But sometimes there are certain complicated cases, or we generally use the term outliers, but they may also be of the same kind. Like, not all apples are red in color. There are certain apples which are green in color. So, is the machine able to tackle those problems? So, here the idea should be that the machine should have the ability to automatically learn from experience without being explicitly programmed. So, this is the basic idea. So, so far, it is difficult to say that machines are able to do this work because they need some data to be trained upon first. Now, how we can achieve that a machine should be able to learn? So there are three basic types of machine learning. You can merge the things together and create new or advanced, but the three standards are supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. Like if you see the first picture, the supervised learning, the student is able to learn certain Things, and a teacher is there to guide that student. So as the name suggests, supervised learning. So there is a supervisor or a teacher to guide us whenever we are trying to make a mistake. While if you see the second picture, the unsupervised learning, the student itself is trying to learn the things and we do not see any teacher around. So in this kind of learning, we try to learn without the without taking the help of a teacher. Okay. Now, what about reinforcement learning? In one case, we have a teacher, in another case, we do not have a teacher. Then what's left for us in reinforcement learning? So we'll see in detail about reinforcement learning a little later. Let's first see the supervised learning. I like showed you. And uh, the slide, there are three fruits. Rather, I should say there are two fruits only. Uh, if you don't get confused between the first one, which is apple, and the second one is also an apple, but a green color apple. Accordingly, the fourth picture is of a banana, and fifth is also a banana, but of green color. So here the idea is that we have a supervisor or a teacher. How a teacher would be involved over here? So the teacher is involved in the form of a label or a class label that we say over here. Like, I'll give you this as a data, which is the image of an apple. And I'll also tell you that this is an apple. Like label one would be an apple. So we'll be having a model over which we'll be passing the images of these fruits. And then we'll be generating certain labels out of 
the algorithm that we have developed. So maybe for this image, the first one, we got a label to be an apple from the algorithm. Then we'll try to check the answer in the ground truth. Now, this ground truth is the kind of feature that I was telling you about. If we know the answer, we can match our result with the correct answer. If we are moving in the right direction, we'll keep on supplying the other data type or data samples. But if we move in the incorrect direction, that means there are certain features which were wrongly learned and we need to update them. Now in this case, if there is a mismatch, we'll try to update those things. So generally, these are known as weights, which we try to back propagate, especially when we are dealing with a neural network. Now, in an unsupervised learning, what happens is we have data, but we do not associate it with details. I have been given the data, but I do not know the answer corresponding to it. Like I've been given an image of an apple, but I am not told that the correct answer for this image was an apple. So what are the things which we can do in this particular scenario? So the standard one is clustering. What we can do is, irrespective of what fruit, let's say, as an example, if we keep the fruits only, irrespective of knowing what a particular fruit is, what is the name of that fruit, I'm only interested in grouping similar looking fruits together. Like, we'll be clustering or grouping all the apples together, but I do not know the name of that particular fruit. Okay? So there would be certain uh, characteristics based upon which we'll be making groups out of them. So these are supervised and unsupervised learning methods. What is reinforcement? So reinforcement learning is majorly towards the basics of artificial intelligence where agents are different. Like if you talk about an agent, which is simply a vacuum cleaner, the objective of the vacuum cleaner is to clean the room. And let's assume it is an automated vacuum cleaner. Nobody is guiding the vacuum cleaner. So how would a robotic vacuum cleaner will be able to solve the problem? What it will do, it will interact with the environment the environment may be, there are certain rooms which are connected through walls and maybe there are doors over the rooms. The vacuum cleaner first has to identify the door, move inside the door, sense the dirt if it is present in the room, and then it needs to clean that particular dirt which is there in the room. Now, it is quite possible that while uh, the robotic vacuum cleaner is moving, trying to move in a room, it may be colliding with the wall, it will be able to identify the dirt nearby. With time, by interacting with the environment, it will learn that if I collide, then it is not the correct uh, action that I am taking. Like I should not move in this particular direction so that I should uh, not get affected by the environment. Now, how would the environment helping me learn out things? So in this case, what will happen is the environment will try to give you certain rewards or certain penalties upon the action that we are taking. Let's say if we collide with the wall, and obviously it is not good for a robotic vacuum cleaner to collide with the wall. So if the action over which I'm colliding with the wall, then I should be penalized for that particular action so that I should not take that action in future. Accordingly, 
let's say if I found the dirt and if I'm taking an action which is able to clean that dirt, then I should be given a reward that I'm moving in the correct direction. So there is a critic which is helping me out in telling that whether I'm moving in the correct direction or not, irrespective of what was the correct answer. Okay. So this critic is guiding me in terms of giving rewards or penalties. So here, what are the key features of reinforcement learning? Here, the agent, generally we use the term agent when we deal with reinforcement learning, is not being told what action is to be taken. There are certain list of actions available and I need to pick one such action, but I do not know what is the correct action. So I can try several possibilities, like I can apply action A1, if it is not working, then I'll apply action A2 and so on. So what is the best action? Obviously the best action is the one which is giving me more profit. So we need to completely explore and exploit the search space which is there. And the search space is the complete environment and we are dealing with that environment. Okay. So if we see a reinforcement learning problem, as you can see over here, there is an environment, there is an agent. Like in the vacuum cleaner case, the agent was the vacuum cleaner itself and the environment is those multiple rooms with doors, walls, maybe certain rooms are dirty, certain rooms are not dirty. So the agent would be in a specific state. So in an environment, we are having lots of spaces and I am on a given space. In the state space, you are at a given state. Now on a given state, if the initial state is S0, you will be interacting with the environment. So how would an agent interact with the environment? By taking certain actions. Now these actions may or may not change the environment. Right? If I'm changing the environment, for example, the vacuum cleaner is in a room where there is lots of dirt and now the vacuum cleaner has cleaned the dirt. So obviously now the environment got changed because in that particular state where there was uh, lots of dirt, now the dirt has been removed. So the environment got changed. I may be in a room where there is no dirt. If I apply an action to clean the room, the room is already clean, so it won't be making any changes in the environment. Now, so we are interacting with the environment by taking a suitable action. Now, how environment as a critic is helping me out in learning things. So the environment is giving me a reward. If the reward is some positive value, so I'm making a profit or it is actually a positive reward. But if the reward is negative, that means it is equal to a penalty which has been catered on me so that I should not make this action over a given state. 